With the release of the new Azure AZ PowerShell module, we might want to migrate away from the older Azure RM module, as it's no longer going to receive any new features or commandlets. Migrating to the AZ module also has the benefit of being able to run on PowerShell 6, and is available cross-platform. Now there are a number of steps to cover during the migration, so let's get started with checking our current Azure RM version. So we'll run the get module commandlet and look for the Azure RM module. And as we can see here, we're running version 6.13.1. Now an important note is to ensure that all of your current scripts have been tested on the latest version, 6.13.1, so that you can easily migrate your scripts to the newer AZ module. So with that out of the way, let's proceed with the migration. Now the next step is to remove the existing Azure RM module. Now we could use the uninstall module and specify Azure RM as we're doing here. However, unfortunately, this won't work as expected, as the Azure RM module has numerous sub-modules attached. So if we run the get module command from earlier, but add a star to the end of Azure RM, we'll see a different picture. As you can see, these are all the Azure RM modules that are still installed. In order to remove all of these Azure RM modules, we'll need to use this for each loop, which loads the name of each module into the AZ module variable, and then one by one uninstalls each of them. Now I've also chosen to use the verbose output so that we can see the results of each of the module uninstalls. Now this is going to take quite a bit of time, so we're going to need to be a little bit patient. Well now that the uninstall is finished, let's quickly verify that we got everything. So we'll use the get module again, and perfect. Looks like we got everything this time around. Now to install the AZ module, all we need to do is run the install module commandlet and specify the AZ module. And we're adding the allow clobber switch so that if there's any remaining components from previous installs of Azure modules, they'll be replaced rather than running alongside. Now this process does take a little while, so this would be a great opportunity to take a quick break and go grab a coffee. Well, it looks like the install of our AZ PowerShell module was successful. Now we can connect the AZ module to our Azure subscription using the connect AZ account commandlet. Now here's where the process may differ slightly depending on the platform we're using and the current version of the AC module that we're installing. Normally this commandlet automatically launches the authentication page. However, earlier versions may ask you to open up a web browser manually and go to the device login page and enter the code displayed. So we'll copy our code and we'll switch over to our browser where I've preloaded the device login page, paste our code and click continue. Now, from this point forward, the authentication process proceeds as normal, where we have a dialog asking for our credentials. So we'll enter our username, or choose it from the list, then we'll enter in our password, and click sign in. Now we'll flip back over to our PowerShell window, wait for it to authenticate, and there we go. As we can see here, we've successfully connected and authenticated to our Azure subscription using the AZ module. So let's do a quick check to verify we can see our resources. We'll use the get AZ VM, Pull all the virtual machines from the Canada Central location, where I keep most of my virtual machines. And that came back successfully, and we can see that we have two VMs in the Canada Central location. Now the final step is to enable the Azure RM aliases, so that we can continue using our existing scripts, which still point to the old Azure RM commandlets. Once enabled, aliases for the Azure RM commandlet names will be redirected to the new AZ commandlets. Now it is important to note that all versions of the Azure RM module must be uninstalled first. So if there's any remaining Azure RM modules, those will be used before the aliases can be redirected to the AZ module. So to enable the aliases, we use the enable Azure RM alias commandlet and set the scope to the current user. With that done, let's test the alias by using the get Azure RM VM commandlet this time to perform the same query as above. And it worked. Now we can continue to use our old scripts while we work on updating them to reference the new AZ module. And that's all there is to it. Thanks for watching.